Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Mr. Anonymous, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sandman, your ability to point out female tendencies manipulation, as well as the uncomfortable aspects of female nature, in a way that's relatable, witty, and present day is impressive. Your efforts alongside others, examples Sigmund Freud and Lionel Messi, have reawakened me to my previous self, a young man indifferent towards women focused on the task at hand. My life was a success story until the age of 17 when a unique sports injury brought me to an abrupt halt. My high school sweetheart took off and I was kicked out of my parents' house, and other troubles of similar nature such as depression and anxiety set in. I wasn't a total write-off, however. I went to the local university for business and dropped out two years into my degree, realizing that it was no Harvard. I started a full-time photo-slash-video business which now pays the bills, leaving my schedule wide open to retrain my body and further my passions. At the age of 23, things were looking up for me, but I was still having a hard time with women I found attractive, and to my confusion was now experiencing unexplained health issues. As a result, I began to read and think a lot trying to discover the explanations. Before I discovered the significance of my sports injuries, this self-discovery process pushed me to learn a lot about the human body, human growth, sexuality, human nature, and how all this relates to politics and biology. And as a result, led me to yourself, Sandman, as well as the MGTOW community as a whole, which is nothing short of a godsend. Today I'm sharing something I believe has been overlooked and discredited due to its amateur and quirky presentation. I believe I've discovered a game changer in the MGTOW community and in the modern Western society. A couple of years ago I came across what is now known online as the HAPA theory. Simply put, HAPA suggests that your sexual practices, as well as other practices that harness the essence of your vitality, change your body for better or for worse. One of the more striking and controversial points HAPA makes is that masturbation changes the body negatively. I will quickly attempt to summarize this expansive idea and provide my own simple analogy. The fundamental problem with masturbation is that it seems to create negative feedback or distortion in the human body because the individual must interact with himself or another object other than a woman's vagina, thus breaking the natural cycle that occurs between a man and a woman making love. A real-world analogy I would use is the effect of an electric guitar feedback or mic feedback and the distortion that results. I believe that men are going to have to come to terms with this uncomfortable truth sooner than later, and perhaps this will add fuel to the fire so that men have an answer to the liberal and feminist movements that are currently crippling the Western man and shaking the foundations of modern civilization. My question to you, Sandman, is now moving forward, what do you tell men who regularly indulge in porn? Knowing that the body and mind are interconnected, and considering the idea that masturbation negatively affects your mind. Where do you now stand in regards to sex robots? Well, Mr. Anonymous, thanks for your comments, questions, and donation. Don't think for a moment you're going to convince me for a second to stop draining my lizard, or anyone else for that matter. I fully understand where you're coming from, but I also think this so-called feedback that you speak of is about the suspension of disbelief. When men date, watch movies, sleep with women, play video games, and fap, we are suspending our disbelief. The suspension of disbelief is required in a sort of semi-conscious decision in which we put aside our disbelief and accept the premise as being real for the duration of the story. You know the movie isn't real, it's just a projection. You know the woman you're dating is trying to turn you into a walking cash machine in a gold mine. You know that when you fap and sleep with someone it's gross and disgusting, but your mind suspends that part of your mind that gets disgusted by it. The same goes for video games. I remember as a kid when I was playing Nintendo games, not noticing that my thumb was bleeding or that my brain felt like I was actually being drawn through a world of fog. As of right now, there are only three things left that suspend my disbelief. One is fapping, the second one is a good song or music, and the third one is traveling. More specifically, the act of traveling from one place to another. So to take away my fapping would mean that I would actually need to find more music and hit the road more. And I can't watch a movie or television from beginning to end anymore and maintain my suspension of disbelief. I also can't date a woman or have sex with her with the suspension of disbelief. I'm now 99% conscious of her attempts to manipulate me. All I have left is chatterbait and nude vista, and now you're trying to take those away from me. I would also go as far as to say that men are masturbating more than ever because our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. Even with porn, there are supposedly limitless numbers of free videos out there for us to enjoy, but I find that there aren't enough of the kind that I like. In the past, I would have sat through a half-hour television show with my suspension of disbelief intact. Today, the only thing I have on a daily basis is fapping that does that, and I need to shut my mind off from time to time or I fear that it might explode. Fapping has freed me by giving me a small dose of sexual gratification on a daily basis. Otherwise, I'd be like a dog running out and humping a woman's leg for attention. It also allows me to walk down the street and not focus on how attractive or unattractive the women are around me. When I hang out with other guys, they're constantly sizing up the women in the crowd and mentioning to me which ones they like and which ones they don't. And I don't do that because I found the magical fapping wonderland where the honeys flow like champagne and there are tits on tap. 
I'm as happy as Tyrion Lannister in a whorehouse with a glass of wine in one hand and a freshly squeezed breast in the other. And you want to take that away from me. If anyone ever tries taking it away from me, I'll actually be willing to shoot them while they're shitting on the toilet. I agree with you that porn drains my energy sometimes, but for the most part if I don't overdo it, then it helps me get a good night's sleep and keeps the Kleenex company well funded. But I'll tell you what, sex is five times more draining. Sure I'll have a good sleep of the dead after I've had sex, but it often makes me lazy, complacent, and it makes me not thirsty for life anymore. Porn and fapping on the other hand keeps me in a place between life and death. I'm relaxed enough to be chilled but not completely void of motivation like I am after sex. Women should also be happy with men fapping. We are objectifying ourselves and we aren't objectifying them. But we know that women lie. They want to be objectified and they don't like porn because it wastes male objectification on an image on a screen instead of their own flesh. Mr. Anonymous, I also want you to know that I have actually voluntarily stopped fapping before in my life when I was a Christian. I had complete mastery over my sexuality. I shut it down and didn't even get excited anymore. But that scared me because I wasn't getting erections anymore. Back then I didn't need sexual release to relax me because I could just sit down on the couch and turn on the television, suspend my disbelief, and I could easily relax. Today fapping is the only thing that takes me out of my reality on a regular daily basis, and without it I would be fully conscious all the time. I think there are far more dangerous things than fapping. Television is one such thing if you let it suck you into watching a stream of seemingly never-ending television shows. Being a videographer and professional image maker, I'm paying more attention to the production values, the costumography, scripting, as well as other elements, so I can't suspend my disbelief with that anymore. And that's a good thing because if I did, then I would also do the same with commercials, and thus they would work on my brain. Today I've trained my brain to just ignore all advertising unless, of course, it's something that I need. And if I've done a Google search for it, then I often get Google targeted ads to the websites that I visit. The ad companies seem to have adapted to my ability to block my suspension of disbelief. Mr. Anonymous, you will never stop men from fapping. Fapping is a game changer because it frees up men from gynocentrism. Why do you think the priests were so busy in the past trying to prevent men from fapping? Because they knew that men that were sexually frustrated wouldn't get married and have children. And then the priests wouldn't make any money off the wedding ceremonies, baptisms, and funerals because dead people without a family and relatives don't do elaborate death rituals. Meanwhile, many priests are abusing altar boys. I used to feel guilt and shame fapping, but no longer, because I know it allows me to be more free of gynocentrism. You also asked me about sex robots. I think that when they come, no pun intended, they will change everything, if they can allow for a suspension of disbelief that you get when you're with a young lady in a bedroom. If some company can accomplish that miracle, then we're going to see men liberated. But I fear that that liberation will not be as expected. Men will be shamed for sleeping with sex robots the same way we're shamed today for playing video games and watching porn. Instead of people shaming the average young man by saying that he still lives in his mother's basement, they'll say that he can't sleep with a human woman. But the downside of sex robots may be that men will be so satisfied that they won't be as hungry for actual women, money, or anything else. After all, if most men make money to attract and keep women, and all they need is a robot with a one-time payment and fee, why would he actually continue to work for a fat female ogre that they call wifey? They wouldn't now, would they? Instead, they would only pay for the electricity for that robot. Sex robots would probably be able to satisfy the majority of men out there so much that women would neglect their hygiene and appearance even more than they do today. After all, if the average woman can't compete with a sex robot, then what's the point of looking presentable when no man will actually want her? Her naked form won't even be worth fapping to anymore. If you ask most guys these days why they fap, they'll probably tell you so they can relax and take a load of stress off their hard-working backs. They aren't doing it necessarily because they're sexually frustrated or as a substitute for sex. I harness my vital bodily energies to make myself productive. Fapping shuts my mind off for the time that I'm doing it and maybe 5 to 10 minutes afterwards. Beyond that, I'm back to fully energized and ready to solve some grand problem. I find that I almost have limitless amounts of creativity and motivation and drive simply because I'm not dating women anymore. I have no idea where it came from, but so long as fapping doesn't stop it, then I'll continue to do so. Also, if you don't clear out your prostate, the odds of getting prostate cancer increase greatly. Nature has made our bodies with the stipulation that you either use it or you lose it. Think of everyone being born with six-pack abs. But if you don't use them, then nature takes them away and buries them under a pile of fat. And as my sex ed teacher always used to say in high school, practice makes perfect. He of course was referring to studying for tests, but I find the more I jerk off, the better I get at it. I'm just glad that it's not a team sport because it would make me very uncomfortable, especially for a straight man such as myself. And no offense for the gay men out there because I'm definitely not a team player. And on top of that, the best orgasms I've ever had were on my own because I spent six to seven years perfecting my pitching before I could lay it down on a vagina. But enough of my crazy ramblings for yet another day. I don't want to take my jokes too far or I might actually spoil them for everyone. 
Anyways, thanks again Mr. Anonymous for your donation as well as your topic request. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the boners away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.